Hi friends, welcome to another Graphic Novels Out Loud with Miss Ashley from the Crystal Lake Public Library. Today we're going to read some of Dave Pilkey's new Cat Kid Comic Club with Little Petey, you all know from the Dogman comics. You can access this book through our um, Hoopla or Access 360 apps with your library card. All right, Cat Kid Comic Club, written and illustrated by Dave Pilkey as George Beard and Harold Hutchins, with color by Jose Garibaldi. And you can see Lil Petey is holding Squid Kid and Katie did, an epic sneak preview by Molly and Lil Petey. Chapter One, Ideas. Hmm. Hey guys, welcome to the first meeting of the Cat Kid Comic Club! Hooray! Do you remember all of the little tadpoles from the Dogman books? If you don't, they're all sitting there at their tables, at their desks. This is Lil Petey, he's the president, and I'm the vice president. Hey, how come Molly gets to be vice president? Yeah, cause I called it first, I got dibs. Ah, rats. No fair. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Yeah, Melvin? Can I be a vice president too? Um, hey, I want to be vice president. Me too. We can't all be vice presidents. Says who? I'm going to be the senior vice president. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm the supreme vice president. I'm the triple double secret vice president. I'm the National Vice President times 10. I'm the Universal CEO of Global Vice Management times infinity. You can't do that! You're fired! Daddy! Here comes Flippy. What's going on? Starla fired me! From what? Um, I forgot. Well, we're off to a great start. Yep, says little Petey. I fired him from the comic club. Oh yeah? You can't do that, Starla. Told ya. But he was trying to hog all the glory. She was too. If you kids can't behave yourselves, then Lil Petey is going to have to go home. Is that what you want? No, no. Then you'd better straighten up and fly right. Okay, sorry, Daddy. <clears throat> so if everybody is done being a pain, then let's get started. Thanks, Molly. Today we're going to work on ideas. So everybody grab a pencil and draw a line on your paper like this. <laughs> I like how Molly is uh, drawing with her. I'm not quite sure. Is that like a super ray? It's not an arm. It's very cool. All right, now on the left side, write five things that you love. And Molly writes pizza, bubble gum, squids, videos, and Katie did. And Lil Petey is writing comics, fireflies, popcorn, and friends. Okay, now on the other side, write five things you like to do. Little Petey writes, play, read, laugh, write, and draw. Sweet! And you can see Molly wrote, draw, sing, read, talk loud, and be weird. <laughs> All right, would anyone like to share their lists? Oh, 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 oh! Okay, Melvin. <clears throat> Behold! <laughs> Melvin likes science, math, physics, dinosaurs, and extra credit. Melvin likes to complain, argue, study, brush his teeth, and gloat smugly. Oh, Melvin! <laughs> At least he's self-aware, I guess. <laughs> Actually, that's pretty good. Now let's all try to think up an idea. 
by using stuff from Melvin's lists. Hmm. Oh, oh, he could write about a dinosaur who likes to brush his teeth. Or a nerd who likes to annoy people. Urgh. I got it! I'm going to write a comic about a toothbrush named Dennis who wants to be a lawyer for dinosaurs. And I shall call my masterpiece Dennis the Toothbrush Who Wanted to Be a Dinosaur Lawyer by Melvin the Frog. Ta-da! Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Molly and Lil Petey are looking at each other. Okay. And then Melvin says, now everybody be quiet, I'm working. And then Little Petey says, so let's quiet, I said. Okay, while well, Melvin works on his comic, we thought we'd show you all some done already. Feast your eyeballs. And here is Melvin's comic. Dennis the Toothbrush Who Wanted to Be a Dinosaur Lawyer by Melvin the Frog. One time there was a toothbrush named Dennis who wanted to be a lawyer for dinosaurs. <laughs> That's a pretty good toothbrush. So, yeah, the end. About the author, Melvin the Frog. Melvin the Frog is widely known as one of the world's most important major voices in graphic literature. He has won, <laughs> he had written two and then crossed it out and wrote countless awards for his genius and awesome humility. His awesomeness has inspired countless generations and stuff. Coming soon, Dennis the Toothbrush, who wanted to be a dinosaur lawyer too, Cretaceous Court. Uh, Nobel, <laughs> Nobel Peace Prize for graphic novels, <laughs> and the Calderberry Award. Copyright by Melvin the Frog. No copying or I'm telling. This might be the greatest about the author page I've ever seen. <laughs> well, that was dumb. Hey, we do not talk to each other like that, Naomi. But I was just being honest. Do you need to go sit on the timeout rock? No. Then you need to apologize to Melvin. I'm sorry your comic was dumb. Oh boy, <laughs> it looks like Naomi's on the timeout rock. <laughs> and so, oh, Molly says, worst day ever. Don't worry, Molly, things will be better tomorrow. How could they get any worse? <laughs> Chapter two, we quit. Oh boy, I think they're going to get worse. Hey guys, welcome to day two of the Cat Kid Co Excuse me, Molly. Before you begin, Naomi has something she'd like to say. Naomi? Um, well, I... I'm sorry I said your comic was dumb, Melvin. I mean, it wasn't very good and... Naomi! Uh, but at least you made a comic, and I didn't even do that. So I'm sorry for being mean. Okay. You may continue, Molly. All right, guys. Does anybody want to share the comic they're working on? Anybody? Did anybody work on their comic last night? I couldn't think of any good ideas. Me neither. I'm not good at art. Yeah, I can't draw good. So nobody made a comic last night? Well, I tried, but it was dumb. I ripped mine up. I can't spell good. Um, no offense, but me and Summer quit. Yeah, no offense. Why? Um, comics just aren't our thing. Sorry, dude. See you later. Wait! There they go after him. What is your thing? Um, Summer likes photography and Starla is a poet. Oh, well comics don't have to be stories. They could be poems. And you can illustrate comics with photos. We can? Sure, you can work together. We can work together? 
Uh, yeah. Why didn't you say so? We're back in. High five. Let's go. I'll write some new haiku and I'll get my camera. Aw, look at that. Petey and little Molly are smiling. And the rest of you. I'm so disappointed. Fear, fear, fear. You're all a bunch of fraidy frogs. You're scared of making mistakes. You're terrified of messing up. Molly's right. You're afraid to fail, so you didn't even try. Ooh. If you guys want to be in this club, then you've got to get over your fears. So your assignment for tomorrow is to fail. They want us to fail. Yeah. Big time. <laughs> um, how? Tonight, I want you all to make a comic that is terrible. Yeah, make a super dumb one. Embarrass yourself. Ooh, I can do that. Me too. I'm, I'm good at embarrassing myself. Worst comic gets a prize. Can we work together? Of course. Awesome! All right, they're finally excited, guys. We're gonna fail together. Let's go make a lousy comic. Disaster, here we come. United, we shall lose. And then Flippy goes, um, are you kids sure you know what you're doing? And then they say, nope, <laughs> but they're gonna try. Chapter three, four fabulous flops. Ooh, look, they came back with comics. Hey guys, it's day three of the CKCC. Did anybody fail miserably last night? Ooh, ooh I did, us too, us too. I'm an embarrassment to myself and others. Sweet, who wants to go first? We do, we do. The Monster Cheese Sandwich. Story by Naomi, color by Pink, art by Quirky, and lettering by Kendrick. Mama had a little baby. Little baby was very hungry. Give me some food, man. Okay, I will make a monster cheese sandwich for you. So she went to the fridge, but Mama grabbed the wrong cheese by accident. So the monster cheese is on the top shelf, but Mama grabbed the monster cheese. Mama cut the cheese. <laughs> chop, chop. <laughs> she put it on some bread and grilled it. S but then, ow! Hey, little baby, your sandwich came to life. Not again. Run, little baby, run! Monster cheese sandwich attack! But then, where did he go? Psst! Hey, give me a banana, man! <laughs> okay. Oh, there you are. Here, let's be friends. No! Peel, 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 run, toss, slip, smile, clunk. And then, are you okay? <laughs> Not really. Here, have a banana. Oh, thanks. Munch, munch. Is it too late to be friends? It's never too late for friendship. Aww. Except when I'm hungry. Nom, 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 nom. The end. <laughs> Baby ate the monster cheese sandwich. Oh my goodness. How to draw the monster cheese sandwich in 17 ridiculously easy steps. Author's notes. This story is based on the truth. One time daddy said he was going to make us monster cheese sandwiches, but I thought he said monster cheese sandwiches. I got scared and cried. I was really little. Now we all call monster cheese monster cheese because we think it's funny but it wasn't at first. Naomi the Great. All right, about the illustrator, Corky. 
Corky has been an artist ever since he was a tadpole. His secret is to draw every day and don't give up even if you make lots of mistakes. About the colorist, Pink. Pink loves music. He can play the ukulele pretty good. He also loves to sing and wrestle. And about the letterer. Do you know what a letterer is? That's someone who writes the letters in the comic. The words, Kendrick. Kendrick the Frog is an awesome dude. He likes swimming and collecting stickers. When he is big, he will stay up as late as he wants. <laughs> All right, here's the reaction. That was awesome! But I thought you were supposed to make a bad comic. Yeah, Molly said it could be dumb. Yeah, but it's still awesome. Really? I think you failed at failing, dude. Oh man. Did you like it, Daddy? Yes, but the ending was a little violent, don't you think? Yeah, it was totally violent. <laughs> oh, goodness, look at Flippy. Okay, who's next? Me, me, me. My Dog by Pedro. My dog is big. My dog is awesome. I can have a dog. My dog poops big poops. I don't clean it up but then some bad ninja guys attack. That poop is bigger than that tadpole. We will kill the world, but then they step on the poop of my dog. Oh no, weak. Now we have to go home, no fair. Because of poops on our shoes is the reason. Boo hoo hoo, yay. My dog saved the world. The end. About the author and illustrator. Pedro. Pedro is nice. P.S. This story wasn't true. It is fake. Pedro really doesn't have a dog, but he wants one. But Daddy says no every time. But maybe I will someday when I am responsible. The end. How to draw <laughs> my dog in 14 redonkulously easy steps. <laughs> it's a pretty sweet dog. Oh, how to draw my dog's poops in three ridiculously easy steps. One, two, three. Now you can give my dog's poops some personality. You can give the poops eyes, a smile, make them happy, sad, sleepy. You can make robot poop, bad guy poop. Baby poop, lady poop, ninja poop, our pirate poop, mummy poop, cyclops poop, Betty poop, Winnie the poop, spider poop, bat poop, poo baka, boba poop, and storm pooper poop. <laughs> Go ahead and pause this page if you want to draw all the dog's poops. <laughs> That was awesome, Pedro. Yeah, good job. Yes, that was very good, Pedro. But the potty humor wasn't necessary, was it? Oh, that was my favorite part. I do not want you kids writing poop jokes. Why? Because there is nothing funny about poo poo. <laughs> oh. Flippy is so distraught. Did anyone make a comic that isn't violent or disgusting? We did. Our comic is 100% free of offensiveness. Super Fail by KT, Kip, and Curly. One day, baby was born. Happy birthday, kid. What will you name him? Super Fail. Why? <laughs> the baby takes the cake, the candle on the cake and throws it. The nurse is very alarmed. Um, oh boy, because the hospital is right next to Joe's Dynamite Company, which is where the candle goes. Kaboom! 
the hospital splits in half. Oh, does that answer your question? Yeah, pretty much. Pillow. Hey, I didn't get hurt. Clonk. And so, super fail, you must be a hero. Help, help. Quick, now's your chance. What's the problem, mister? That old lady just stole a toothpick. By the sign, but the sign says they're free. <laughs> Read the fine print. Free toothpicks. Limit one per customer. <laughs> she took two. I shall stop this crime, says Superfail. Hey, old lady, stop stealing. No way. You'll never catch me. Oh, yeah? I'll tie this rope to her car. Tie, tie, tie. And I'll tie the other end of the restaurant. Tie, tie, tie. Don't worry, mister. Now she'll never get away. Rum. Zoom. Whoosh. Rum. Crash. Oh, no. Another building is split in two. <laughs> And then another and another and the Statue of Liberty and another. But then, oh, I'm stuck. I can solve this problem. Clip. Yeah, snip. And then the car rolls into Sally's nuclear bomb factory. Crash. There's Earth. And now Earth goes kablam. And so, looks like they're in outer space. Gee, thanks for destroying the Earth. But look, I saved your toothpick. Hooray for Superfail, the end. Coming soon, Superfail 2, Old Lady's Revenge. <laughs> Meet the creators. KT likes to hang out with her brothers. Kip likes computers and quesadillas. Curly likes pizza and frosting. I wonder if Curly likes frosting on his pizza. <laughs> I thought you said your comic wasn't offensive. It wasn't. The whole world got destroyed. Billions of people died. Oh yeah. All because of a toothpick? I'm very disturbed by these comics. They're just so awful. I thought they were supposed to be awful. How about you, Poppy? I'll bet you made something nice. I did, Daddy. It's called the cute little fluffy cloud of death. The cute little fluffy cloud of death by Poppy. Once there was a cute little cloud. She was fluffy and dead. Hi, hi. But the sun was mean to her. Hey, you're creeping me out. Go away. So the cute little fluffy cloud of death cried and cried. Her tears watered the flowers. Yay! And Skellopup was not thirsty no more. Yum! Ghost Girl and Skeleton Boy had fun playing in the puddles. Wee! I like this game. Thank you for the nice rain. Let's be friends, okay? Okay. It's fun to be dead. Bounce, 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 bounce. But then, hey, you guys are dead? Nobody likes you guys. Just ignore her and she'll go away. And do you know what happened? Hey, losers. Hey, you stoops. Hey. She went away. And the moon and the stars came out. The end. About the author, Poppy is a frog who lives with her family in a camper by the pond. She likes ghosts and skeletons and drawing and monsters and rain. She likes to draw every day because it is fun. Also, she likes dogs. The end. Did you like it, Daddy? Um, Poppy, may I speak to you in private? Okay. Um, is everything okay? Yeah. Are you depressed or anxious? Um, not really. Is anybody bullying you? No. Then why did you make that comic? 
Oh, because I like skeletons and ghosts and, but why was the little cloud dead? I don't know. Lots of people are dead. Oh boy, poor Flippy is having a hard, hard time. Hey, I'm back. Just in time, we're giving out awards. Oh, did I win? Yep, you got the prize for the weirdest comic. Yay! And you guys get the award for craziest comic. That's the mon monster cheese sandwich. Awesome! And the award for most violentest comic goes to Super Fail. Yes! And here, Pedro, you win for the grossest comic. Sweet! Let's get started on the sequel. Let's make a comic about poop wars. And we got an idea about evil zombies. I'm gonna make a story about a dead airplane. I'll use felt, glue, and construction paper. And I'm gonna make Dennis the Toothbrush Lawyer, Dinosaur Lawyer too. Um, you should probably put some dinosaurs in it this time. And also maybe a plot. Something should happen this time. I'm just saying. I've got it! Murder! All right, that's enough, says Flippy. Chapter four, new rules. All right, kids, things are getting out of control. As usual, you kids are taking things too far. So from now on, I don't want anybody making comics about poo or death. And no more violence and mass destruction. Can we write about diarrhea? No. Zombies? No. Murder? No. Hmm. Well, I'm out of ideas. Me too. Aw, oh, man, now we can't finish our new comic. May I see it? We just made the cover. Ah! Frankenfart versus the bionic, bionic barf bunnies from Diarrhea Land. By Rain and Corky. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of diarrhea. <laughs> and Daddy Flippy says, no, you can't finish it. Hmm. From now on, everyone's comics must be wholesome and uplifting with good values and morals. The tadpole's frowns are getting bigger and bigger. Your comics must have integrity and upright virtue and purity, honor, and ethics. Only then can we... Hey, where did everybody go? Chapter 5, The House Call. Come on, nurse lady, hurry. Flippy said it was an emergency. Ah, uh, it's probably nothing. He worries about those baby frogs too much. Ding dong. Oh, thank heavens you're here. What's the problem this time, Flippy? It's my kids. I think they're disturbed. Where are they? They're all downstairs in the bowling alley. Oh, but look at these comics they made. They're filled with violence and potty humor and, and, and one of them is about death. Oh no, we must operate at once. And look at Flippy's crying. <laughs> and the nurse lady says, hold your horses, doc. Let's read these comics first. Good idea, nurse lady. And so, <laughs> he saved the toothpick. Well, have you made a diagnosis yet? Um, uh, hmm. I think you're overreacting again, Flippy. Overreacting? But what about the violence? What about the potty jokes? What about the reckless disregard for the sanctity of life and stuff? And the nurse lady says, dude, that's normal. Adults make up stories about that stuff all the time. And we call them artists and geniuses and visionaries. Look at Shakespeare. It's all death and violence and fart jokes. <laughs> and she's holding up the skull from Shakespeare and it's going poot. <laughs> if 
it's normal and healthy for grown-ups, then why not for kids? Are you seriously going to praise a grown-up and nurse ladies holding up the Canterbury Tales by Chaucer and shame a child and she has two daddy from Pedro for the same darn thing? Take a chill pill, dude. Flippy says, hmm, maybe you're right. I'm always right. Let's go, doctor. Bye, Flippy. Okay, bye-bye. I'll try harder to be more chill. You better. Where'd you get all that wisdom, nurse lady? I have a degree in baby frog psychology. <laughs> okay, okay, I gotta be more chill. Be more chill. Be more chill. Oh, they're reading Frog and Toad. Good night. Be more chill. Be more chill. Be more chill. Chapter six, King of the Chill. Before you kids start your comic club today, I want to apologize. I'm sorry if I discouraged you yesterday. I shouldn't have let my tastes spoil everything. You kids should write stories that make you happy. Write things that make you laugh. And try not to worry about what others think. You'll never be able to please everyone anyone. Anyway, there will always be haters. So you just focus on what you love. Do that and you'll never fail. Aw, hugs for Flippy. Oh, 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 yes, Melvin. We should always do our best though, right? Of course. And we should try to improve, right? Absolutely. Well, since you brought it up, I made an all new improved comic last night. Wanna read it? Certainly. Dennis the Toothbrush, who wanted to be a dinosaur lawyer too. The Cretaceous Courtroom by Melvin. <laughs> Look at that Triceratops judge. Oh, goodness. <laughs> One time there was a toothbrush named Dennis. He went to law school. Soon he was a lawyer. That was easy. I want to help dinosaurs with my mad lawyer skills. So he got in a time machine and went back 67 million years. Hooray! Now I'm in dinosaur times. Soon Dennis had his very first case the toothbrush lawyer. Help my son, Dennis. He is on trial for murder. Okay, but he didn't do it. Hmm, let's go. Soon they were at the courthouse. There's the judge, the plaintiff, the defendant, and hi, mom. That iguanodon ate my baby. How do you plead? No, I didn't. Hmm, well, you look guilty. So I sentence you to dinosaur jail. Aw, oh, man. Wait, I object. Iguanodon didn't eat no babies. How come? Because iguanodons are vegetarians. Dino facts. Well, why didn't you say so? I forgot. Okay, you are free to go. Case dismissed. But what about my baby? Where did you see her last time? In iguanodon in Iguanodon's garden. Hmm, let's look there. So they did. Hey, here she is. Oh, look at her sleeping. She was asleep this whole time. Let's have a party. Disco fever for the dinosaurs. A dinosaur disco party. They all had fun and ate good food. Nom, nom, <laughs> nom, the toothbrush is eating toothpaste. <laughs> That's funny. Nom, nom, and look, the iguanodon is eating veggie burgers. Nom. Afterwards, they use Dennis to brush their teeth. brush a brush a brush a brush a brush -a. Best lawyer ever. The end. Fun facts about the cast. Spinosauruses lived on land and water. Their fins may have been used to heat up their body quickly or to attract a mate. Length, over 50 feet. Weight, over six tons. 
carnivore, Cretaceous period. Triceratopsis, <laughs> Triceratopsis were vegetarians that had 800 teeth. Their worst enemy was the T-Rex. Length up to 30 feet, weight up to 13 tons. They lived during the Cretaceous period. Iguanodons had five fingers and could grasp things with their hands. Their thumbs had big spikes on them. Sweet! Size up to 43 feet long, weight over eight tons, vegan, Cretaceous period. Toothbrushes were invented in 1977 by Dr. William Brush. He named them after his daughter, Toothetta. They are mainly used for oral hygiene and are not known to practice law. Size up to 10 inches, weight six ounces, diet plaque, disco era to the present. <laughs> about the genius worker. Okay, this is now not about the author, it's about the genius worker. Melvin the Frog is the multiple major award-winning author and illustrator of over one graphic novels. <laughs> Known throughout the globe for his intelligence and dashing good looks, Melvin is also regarded as a key influencer and a trend-setting fashion guru. How can one frog be so awesome? Scientists are working around the clock to solve this mystery. The world may never know, said the world's second smartest person, Dr. Genius. <laughs> Get it? Genius. Dr. Genius. Genius. <laughs> Fans and admirers of Melvin can purchase his autograph for $1 while supplies last. Buy 10, get the 11th for half price. And we have a couple of uh, stickers here. It looks like coolest author award of all time. No take backs. Toothetta Brush Memorial Award. It's in the shape of a tooth. And the Peel It Surprise for Literature. <laughs> Instead of the Pulitzer Prize, the Peel It Surprise. That is funny. Very good, Melvin. Yeah, that was way better than last time. I told him to put dinosaurs in it. I was going to anyway. And I'm not trying to tattle or anything, but I saw him copying how to draw out of a book. Yeah, but I wasn't tracing. I was just, I was, um, it's okay to copy. That's how I taught myself to draw. Yeah, me too. I started copying cartoon characters that I liked and I drew them over and over and over. And soon I was making up my own characters in my own style. But it all started, but it all started with copying. Ditto, dude. See, it's okay to copy. <laughs> Melvin. Oh, and one more thing. You shouldn't make up facts, buddy. I didn't. Toothbrushes were not invented in 1977. Oh yeah. Well, I tried to look it up, but Summer and Starla were hogging the computer all last night. We were working. Yeah, we were editing our haiku photo comic. Check it out. Birds, flowers, trees. Haiku and photos by Summer and Starla. Little flower buds, even if no one can see, open anyway. Ooh, and look at the pictures. The ambitious crow, we see a twig in her beak, but she sees a home. Get it? Because she's using it to make a nest. From a great distance, branches pierce the sapphire sky like dark lightning bolts. But branches up close will tell another story, one of potential. See the buds? If you look closely, you can find marvelous things that yearn to be seen. If you look closer, 
you might find something hidden deep in the shadows. Which of these are we? Shall we hide or brightly shine? We cannot do both. Do you see what's in the shadows? I see the beautiful flower, but I also see an eight-legged friend there. We are very small, but the things inside our hearts could fill up the sky. About Haiku by Summer and Starla. Haiku are poems with 17 syllables. They come from Japan. The syllables are divided into three lines, five, seven, and five. They tell stories of nature and beauty and truth, simple and profound. Even though haiku may take decades to master, kids write the best ones. I would agree with that. <laughs> About the poet and the photographer. Summer and Starla are artists and BFFs, but they're sisters first. Starla loves to read, to disappear in a book, to get lost in words. Summer dreams about dinosaurs and string theory. She also loves crepes. That was wonderful, girls! Yay! Thanks, Daddy! We're going to make a new photo comic this weekend. Sweet! You guys rule! Thanks! Yeah, we know. Does anybody else have a comic to share? Nope. No, not yet. Well, tomorrow is our last club meeting this week. So everybody bring in your comics tomorrow. But we're not done yet. Us neither. It doesn't matter. Just bring us a sneak preview. And we'll have a comic club show and tell party. Hooray! Chapter 7, A Novel Idea. Soon. Hey, what are you two still doing here? Everyone else has gone to work on their comics. We know, but we still can't think of any ideas. Yeah, we're still waiting to be inspired. You know, girls, I've always said, those who sit around and wait for inspiration don't deserve inspiration. Um, what does that mean? It means quit being lazy. Force yourselves to create. But we're not good at making up stories. Then write something that's true. Write about yourselves. Make an autobiographical comic. Rain, you could write about your feelings. And Wendy, you could write about your adventures. Hey, Daddy, can we make a true comic about you? Yeah! Well, um, I don't know. Come on, Daddy, it'll be fun! Well, I guess. Yay! We're going to make an autobiographical comic about Daddy. Wendy, you can't make an autobiographical comic about me. Why? <laughs> because he doesn't drive a car, silly. Oh, yeah. No, no, that's not why. Okay, Daddy, tell us everything about your life. Yeah, start at the beginning. Well, okay, it all started a long time ago. Chapter 8, The Show and Tell Party. <laughs> the next day. Well, we've come to the end of our first week, so let's party. Yay, yay, hooray. I made monster cheese sandwiches for everybody. And I can draw faces on them if you want with ketchup and mustard. Sweet, me next. Ooh, 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 me. Daddy and I made cookies. Oh, look, it's the, the, they look like the cute little fluffy cloud of death. <laughs> Her eyes are chocolate chips. Sweet, awesome. And I made dog poo brownies. Ta-da! They're just regular brownies, but I rolled them into little balls, then squeezed them together. Mmm, they're disgustingly delicious. Here's Flippy. Oh, be more chill. 
be more chill. Be more chill. And we baked a super fail cake. What? <laughs> oh, hold up. Here are the toothpicks. <laughs> Poink. Cake pops. Get your cake pops right here. Mmm, grassy. <laughs> that was a good save. Okay, everybody. Chomp. Munch, 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 gulp. It's time to start our show and tell. Lil Petey and I will go first with our sneak peek of Squid Kid and Katie Did. What's a Katie Did? It's like a cricket. Oh, I knew that. So, without further ado, ta-da! Squid Kid and Katie Did. An epic sneak preview by Molly Ann Lopiti. In a world where everyone looks the same, one kid looked different than the rest. And so, er, get lost, squid kid. Yeah, scram. <laughs> Meanwhile, in a world where everyone thinks the same way, square, 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 Katie did, didn't, triangle. You're a weirdo, Katie did. Yeah, beat it. Boo-hoo-hoo-hoo. -hoo -hoo. But watch out, world, because when these two misfits meet, things will never be the same. Zoom! BFFs forever! Squid Kid and Katie did. World's greatest misfits coming soon. Well, what did you guys think? Um, I liked it, but it was too short. Yeah, it's supposed to be short. It's just a preview. We're not done with the whole book yet. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, ooh, we made a preview too. It's about Daddy and the life he lived before he met us. Daddy had a life before us? No way. Yeah. It's true, and we're telling his story. Check out this sneak peek. Baby Flippy, a sneak peek by Wendy and Rain. In a world filled with creatures big and small, one baby fish was the littlest of them all. Meet Baby Flippy. Alone in a sea of bullies. Hey, fish face. Hi, fish face. Fishy, fishy, fish face. Lost in an ocean of peril and abandoned in an abyss of indifference. One brave baby fish must dig deep to survive against impossible odds. Oh no, look at all those arms. Wendy and Rain proudly present a true story of courage. Baby Flippy. Before he was daddy, he was dinner. Coming soon to a Cat Kid Comic Club near you. Well, what did you think of the... <laughs> what? What's wrong, kids? It's too scary, Daddy. We don't want baby Flippy to get killed. Now, now, I didn't get killed when I was a baby. I'm here now, aren't I? Oh yeah, that means that everything worked out okay in the end. Gee, thanks for the spoilers, Daddy. Yeah, now we know the ending. And Flippy goes, ah, oh, slap. <laughs> Does anybody else have a sneak peek? Ooh, we do, Daddy. We took pictures of our action figures and we're making a comic with them. Wait a minute, I don't remember buying you these action figures. You didn't. We modified all of our broken figures using putty, glue, pipe cleaners, and paint to create all new heroes and villains. <laughs> Chubbs McSpiderbutt, an epic preview by the Hacker Bros. In a world where sinister scoundrels, 
subjugate the souls of civilization. Ha ha ha. A dude accidentally sat on a spider. Plop. Owie! Hey, you bit my butt! Sorry, but you sat on me, so we're even, pal. Oh no, your toxic spider venom is transforming my butt! No! I said I was sorry, geez. Meet the hero with the heart of a warrior and the butt of a spider. Chubbs McSpider Butt. An epic photo comic by the H-A-C-K-E-R Brothers, Hacker, which stands for the Heroic Alpha Commando Kids Elite Regiment. Starring Zeus Goldberg as Chubbs McSpider Butt. Y. Chan as Jake the Flying Spider. Brock Manhammer as Dr. Pasty McSprinkles. And introducing Scott the Worm as Scott the Worm. Coming soon. This comic has been rated PGOG. Probably gonna offend grouches. If you are a, <laughs> if you are a grouch, don't read it. Problem solved. By the Baby Frog Administration of This Pond. Very small font, probably not important. <laughs> that is pretty tiny. That was very good, boys. But I don't understand. How did all of your action figures get broken? Oh, because we threw them off the... Uh, they broke all by themselves by accident. All right, would anyone else like to share their preview? We would, Daddy! We're making a comic with clay and cardboard and stuff. I wrote the story and we made the art. Baby Frog Squad. Story by Billy. Art by Frida, Elle, and Deb. Once upon a time, there were three baby frogs who went to the police academy. They studied hard, learned kung fu, and directed lots of traffic. Crash! Uh-oh. Two were pointing in one direction and one was pointing in the other direction. But soon they got tired of working for the man. Hey, let's bring justice to the universe. Okay. So they built a spaceship and blasted off. Soon a bully was detected on planet number 39. Let's go! And so, rawr! Hey, quit bullying that little dude. Make me! Uh, I don't make cupcakes. I eat them for breakfast. Who will win the epic space battle? Find out in Baby Frog Squad, coming soon. That was wonderful! Thanks, Daddy. Yeah, you all did an awesome job this week. I can't believe that everybody made a comic. Uh, actually, I made two comics, two award-winning, two award-winning comics. Awards don't count if you give them to yourself, Melvin. Yes, they do. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. No, they don't. They do too. They do not do too. Do not do too. Melvin, Naomi. Hmm? I thought you were trying to be more chill, Daddy. Do you need to sit on the timeout rock? Uh, I'm sorry I yelled at you kids. Don't worry, Daddy. It's just like we learned this week. It's okay to fail miserably. Just remember to focus on what you love and always try to improve. Aw, hey, we want some of that. Yeah, let's hug it out, man. And so, <laughs> look at all the love. Well, you can't ask for a sweeter ending than that, or a sappier one. <laughs> Don't miss our next epic adventure, the Cat Kid Comic Club, book two coming soon. Notes and fun facts. Chubb's McSpider butt was made from a broken action figure, epoxy putty, enamel paint, 
and 48 black pipe cleaners, Chanel stems, twisted together to make his legs. The robot bully in Baby Frog Squad was made out of cardboard, hot glue, tape, paper clips, and plastic salad dressing lids for the eyeballs. The baby frogs and baby frog squad were made with Japanese rice clay, their eyes, bodies, hands, and feet, and toothpicks painted with acrylics and markers for their limbs and eyelashes. The pencils on page 164 are toothpicks colored with markers. Summer and Starla's poetic description of haiku on page 125 is not definitive. The art of haiku is ever evolving and has a rich, complex history. English language haiku first appeared in the late 19th century. They were based on Japanese poems called renga, which were structured, improvised verse poetry collaborations, often performed live. The first stanza of a renga, called the haiku, became what we commonly think of as haiku. One of the oldest and most famous Japanese haiku, technically a hoku, has a frog in it. Breaking the silence of an ancient pond, a frog jumped into the water, a deep resonance. By Basho, 1644 to 1694, translated by Nobuyuki Yuasa. And that is the end. Oh, I hope you enjoyed Cat Kid Comic Club. And uh, since we've been doing about the author for all of the comics, I'm gonna read the about the author illustrator by Dave Pilkey. When Dave Pilkey was a kid, he was diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia. Dave was so disruptive in class that his teachers made him sit out in the hallway every day. Luckily, Dave loved to draw and make up stories. He spent his time in the hallway creating his own original comic books the very first adventures of Dog Man and Captain Underpants. In college, Dave met a teacher who encouraged him to illustrate and write. He won a national competition in 1986 and the prize was the publication of his first book, World War I. He made many other books before being awarded the 1998 California Young Reader Medal for Dog Breath, which was published in 1994 and in 1997, he won the Caldecott Honor for The Paper Boy. The Adventures of Super Diaper Baby, published in 2002, was the first complete graphic novel spinoff from the Captain Underpants series and appeared at number six on the USA Today bestseller list for all books, both adult and children's, and was also a New York Times bestseller. It was followed by The Adventures of Ook and Gluck, Kung Fu Cavemen from the Future, and Super Diaper Baby 2, The Invasion of the Potty Snatchers, both USA Today bestsellers. The unconventional style of these graphic novels is intended to encourage uninhibited creativity in kids. His stories are semi-autobiographical and explore universal themes that celebrate friendship, tolerance, and the triumph of the good-hearted. Dave loves to kayak in the Pacific Northwest with his wife who is actually Cynthia Ryland, another notable uh, children's author.